Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. My name is Peter. And my name is Ashton. Good morning, guys. Good morning, no, what- Ben. How are we doing? How are you doing? You doing? Doing you fine. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Good. A bit okay. sleepy, but I'm all right. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm also a bit tired. There was a, a risk that I think it, maybe it's just August. I mean, it'll be September by the time this episode is. In fact, it's it may September be September today. today. September, September the first when we're mm. recording. Uh, August, we've not had the best track record of having all of us together in the same room for this podcast. Nearly happened again. It very nearly happened again, Uh, but I'm feeling much better now. Thank you. (laughs) Good. Uh, We're we're all glad that you're okay. We over in. Oh, I missed. I've just realized I missed. um, Game night yesterday. You, you did. did. Time. And it yeah. was a really good. good one, actually. Yeah. 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 Did you play yeah. Geogasser? No, no, we played oh. Jackbox. This oh, okay. is the Patreon exclusive yes. reward game yeah. night. Just thought I'd slide that in there. And we, to, um, so you know. we introduced a new character to the world. Well, actually, two new characters oh. to the world. We played a bit oh, of, gosh, um, yeah. what was it called? Champed Up which is like a drawing one where you can draw like a character and they have to fight against someone else. And Ben drew a character called Pretty Boy. Pretty Boy. And it was horrible. I've got a photo of Pretty Boy. Would you like to see I'd love to see, Would Pretty, you like to see Boy? Pretty Boy. Yeah. And then we had a second character that I don't know when the last time I played Jackbox was, but my name when I opened up the app was Tony Baboni. Right. And I don't know why, but then we just started this like ongoing like accent that was just like the guy from the Callisto Protocol. Yeah, like, so, hey. hey, I'm Tony oh, Baboni. Yeah. Tony Baboni. Yeah. And we yeah. just were doing that for like the full two hours. Um, Such a rich tapestry such we a weaved. Rich tapestry oh, for wow, the Babonis. I missed out on all of the all these origin stories. Yeah. There's Pretty Boy. Oh, Pretty Boy is horrible. Isn't he? Pretty. The Ooh, scream by that artist. Pretty boy. Oh, is it? Is it me? You can't really see him on Hello, the camera. It's pretty boy. Yeah, he's, he's the champion of spicing things up in the bedroom. He is. Oh no, that's worse. <laughs> oh me? Did somebody call for pretty boy? Yeah. I've been to Victoria's Secret. Oh. <laughs> So yeah, that's Pretty Boy. And Tony Baboni, who yeah. is... Uh, Tony sh- Baboni! Hey. Tony Baboni! Hey. I'm making the Callisto protocol here. He's probably going to show up again, I think, at some point. If we were doing predictions, we were saying yesterday, Tony Baboni would almost certainly be Ashton, who Ashton would be replaced with if if she lost. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah predictions. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Bumpis, Dick Manchinko, Tony, Tony Baboni. Baboni. Tony, Tony Baboni. Baboni. Would well, you have to talk like that? I mean, I didn't have to... I mean, when I say I didn't, I mean, Brian Bumpus Brian didn't Bumpus. have to talk in a Brian Butterfield voice because he just used his normal voice. Um, Maybe as just did Dick. When they intru- when Tony Baboni oh, introduces Tony Baboni. him, Tony that's Baboni. just, that's, Hi. that's it. Yeah. I am Tony Baboni. That's, and then you talk. Yeah. But anyway, we can't do those anymore because E3 is dead, yeah. which brings us nicely Maybe. back onto the fact that this, maybe, that this is a video game podcast where we talk about video game things. And each and every week we're sponsored by a very real video game adjacent <laughs> sponsor, He's laughing. Just, I don't know why he's I'm laughing because this is really this is no, really serious. I'm laughing at the notion that Mrs. Baboni <laughs> had a baby and thought, "What should I call it? Tony." <laughs> Tony it's Baboni. actually Anthony, but he goes by Tony. Right? Yes. Okay. What was it? Uh, Anthony, Anthony Boba Nathan. Boba Nathan. <laughs> yeah. Oh my was, God. Okay. Well, someone suggested the English version. Sorry. Let's continue. We've got yeah. This is really Sorry. serious. This is because it, it brings in money, which allows us to do this. Uh, Peter's got the ad read in front of him. Uh, a game has come out that's being just absolutely slated um, oh, no. for its its uh, because it just doesn't stack up next to Grand Theft Auto. Oh man! Um, oh, man. You know, in Grand Theft Auto, you can there's that mini game where you can um, uh, like decorate a bedroom, um, and you can do it really quickly. Mm. Yeah, mm. you know, just super fast. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, there's that new game that's come out, and in comparison, it's rubbish. Paint slow. <laughs> no thanks. It's just not as good as no, no. It's just not as GTA, good. is it? It's getting like it's sort coming. of high sixties on Metacritic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, is it know. is it woke? Yeah, it's really woke. Um, and What's woke about the paint? The paint slogan um, that they? you can like that like we're we're all uh, it's it's sort of a colorblind game in the sense that I don't see color. Right. I just see paint. Mm. Um, okay. I see the paint d- deep down inside. Um, that make that makes me really cross. Yeah, like I can't even explain how. I'm gonna. Do you know what that I'm says gonna shout to me? At you. That mm. says there was a pink hair in the writing room. Oh, yeah, <laughs> right. Oh, oh I nearly swore. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, wow, that makes me really mad. Mm-hmm. That yeah, that it's... paint slow is like that. I Don't be mad it. though. Why? Because it's not real. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, thank I'm God. still going to be really cross though. Yeah. yeah. Those bloody pink hair in the writing room. <laughs> 
I'm not familiar with that phrase, but I instantly understand everything about it. I heard it for the it. first time yesterday, right. and I was like, yeah. <laughs> what, "What? Oh, oh, it's bad, isn't it? It's so bad." Yeah. Uh, anyway, we're not sponsored by Paint Slow. No, we're sponsored by our wonderful patrons over at Patreon.com. Patrons. Patrons. Paint. Patreon.com forward slash Team Triple Jumbo. For as little as $1, you can support this podcast and ask questions and all sorts of other stuff as well. We've got other, loads of other tiers, all that kind of whiz and wallocks. I'm glad we got the 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 Saints, the Saints Row Woke stuff out of the way at the start so that people who are upset about the fact that it doesn't make us really cross can just go now. <laughs> and then we can continue the rest of the podcast. Yeah with you guys yeah uh we've got a question here haven't we peter yep it's from callum story who says hey bap currently enjoying a renegade run of mass effect legendary edition but still find myself choosing occasional paragon options as the uh, as the alternative makes me feel too bad do you enjoy playing the baddie in games or do you prefer the goody two shoes route every time thank you callum Thank you, Callum. Thank you, Callum. I'm a goodie like almost all the time Me in too. games. I really struggle to be bad. Um, I've never, ever, uh, I don't think I've ever harvested a little sister in Bioshock, and I played that game a lot. Uh, I think I did it once because I needed to capture some footage or something, or, uh, you know, I, I had to, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I've, I've harvested a little sister once and thought, oh, that's weird, a slug comes out. I don't like that. Mm. But, um, Never, never done it on a, like a, a, just a at home chilling playing the game kind of run. Uh, I always pretty much do the right thing in the likes of Fallout and Oblivion. Sometimes you don't have a choice. It's like you know mm. you caught between a rock and a hard place. But if it's you know, do you kill this person or do you help them? I always help them, and that's even with me playing as. Um, I really like being a thief in um, Elder Scrolls games and Fallout games, I guess. But I really enjoy joining the Thieves Guild and stuff. And in that sense, I guess you could say that I'm a baddie. But even within the realms of being a thief, I tend to be a little bit sort of Robin Hood. And I'm like, I only steal from rich houses. And mm. uh, then I'll like give coins to beggars and things like that. So even when I'm playing a bad person uh, or, you know, breaking the law, then I'll, I'll tend to uh, still kind of be good ultimately. So... Yeah, I think on Dishonored, I didn't... You know, there was always the option to um, not kill the person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you could, like, have them sent away to work down a mine or something, which sounds equally horrible. But I think I did tend to go for the kills in that rather than uh, the, the non-lethal option. That's probably maybe the, the only time I've been bad. But that almost feels like the vanilla default route and, like, anything yeah. else is a bit of a deviation. In so. video yeah. games, it's often easier to kill than it is to yeah. know yeah. how to go for the pacifist route. Like, you have to you have to really know the game inside and out. Yeah. It's, it's very rare that you can... It's not like you're presented with a choice of kill or spare. That doesn't happen yeah, very often. Really. It's more, you know, you have to find out some secrets. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Ashton? I also play a goodie yeah. most of the time. Like, when I played Cyberpunk recently, I had all non-lethal weapons... So people wouldn't die. They'd just be knocked unconscious. Right. And um, I would always give money to the homeless people that were around. I'd just give them quick five eddies. Um, but like, yeah, I don't really like making the bad. I don't really like being a bad boy. Um, it makes me feel bad. Mm. I don't like that. I'd like to feel happy when I'm playing a game and be like, wow, I'm a good guy. I'm saving this city from all these terrible corporations. I am the good guy. Yeah. I don't want people to like play the game and feel like I'm the bad guy. Um, but I do kind of sometimes wish that like I just did. Like yeah, sometimes I'm like, it would be so much easier if I just was the bad guy. Like I could just go in, just not even talk to anyone, just kick them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, with your fist. With my fist. Yeah. <laughs> like you couldn't see my foot. So I just, I was going to say, kick their ass but then i i stop myself but then i say it anyway so whatever um <laughs> uh so yeah i feel like sometimes i'm just like man it would be so much easier just to be the bad guy and just go in guns blazing all the time and just not care when anyone thinks about me and be the bad guy but i just i feel bad i have mm. my conscience streams too far into video games where i'm like i can't say i simply can't what if they think i'm the bad guy these npcs that are not real <laughs> yeah so I always play the good guy as well. So. I'm again. I'm the same. It's not. <laughs> it's not nice 
to play the bad options a lot of the time. I have done it before, for specifically for trophies mm -hmm. and like new playthroughs and various things where there's an evil option or uh, or a good option. But usually I will... Oh, what's what's the middle? What is the middle? Is that the gray option? Yeah, like neutral. Yeah, just I, yeah neutral. I, I will yeah, often up now, end up sort of, yeah, like in, in sort of neutral ground, say in Mass Effect rather than true good or true evil. I've never gone yeah. true evil in Mass Effect, but I have gone true good. In fact, I must have done for trophies. Anyway, I usually, in, an, in a normal playthrough, when I played through the Legendary Edition or Collection or whatever it was called last year, uh, I ended up sort of in the middle um, because there are several moments where the Paragon option uh, the or the Renegade option is really cool, which is just like sort of Han Solo-esque, like just shoot the baddie in the face while he's talking. Right. You mm. know, um, Paragon in... I mean, it, I think it varies game to game. In Mass Effect, Paragon tends to be do everything by the books, not just do the right thing. Mm. So there are some options sometimes, like a journalist who's smearing your good name, who you can just punch in the face <laughs> while she's trying to like talk trash to you. You can just punch her. And, th and that happens, I think, in every single one right. of the games. There's just, you bump into her and there's an option to just, the Renegade option just to deck her <laughs> because she's saying that you're, you know, some sort of evil entity mm. uh, which sort of proves her point but is also very funny and really good mm -hmm. um so yeah it varies but it's yeah i don't want to i don't want to be a dick in games no. i do get a little bit mob mentality though when it comes to like playing games together like the when we play the odd like wales interactive game mm. it does get a bit mob mentality of being yeah. like do the bad thing yeah, yeah. yeah. When we're playing oh together, do that I silly think. thing and i'm like oh this mm. is this is what they do experiments on like, yeah it really is <laughs> <laughs> when it I really play it myself, is. I'm like, and I don't want to hurt anyone, but everyone's like, kill them all. Yeah, mm. that's but, definitely true. Yeah, It's like that meme, my escapist power fantasy is being nice to everyone. Mm. <laughs> don't, don't, want the, don't want the pretend people to be cross with me. Yeah. I do sometimes, and maybe this counts as the sort of gray area, I, will, I might choose a bad option, quote unquote, mm. to kind of deliver retribution to a, someone who's clearly been a dick in the game. Mm. Yeah. So like on paper, the good option might be to sort of forgive and forget sort of thing. But like, yeah. if I can beat up or maybe even kill someone who is, you know, he's a slave trader or, you know, he's just sold his child to to someone or whatever mm -hmm. it is, then I might do that. Um, yeah. But yeah. It also depends on the quality and the uh, of the writing in the game. Uh, mm -hmm. As Dusk Falls, which I spoke about on the podcast, which really fell apart at the end, definitely had a... I think probably what they considered to be a good path where there was some forgiveness going on. And I was still very much in the mentality and mindset that I was for the entire final few chapters, which was, why are you trying to make these guys sympathetic? Mm. Mm. As soon as I was able to call the police, I did. Like, you know, you can call them if you if you want. It's it's fine. I'll understand. It's like, yeah, I'm going to call them. Yeah. <laughs> I've just sat through five hours of this game where you've been awful. Why on earth would I choose to forgive you? You've shown no no remorse. Like, <laughs> there's no there's no redeeming your character. So, yeah, it depends on the quality of the game as mm. well. Sometimes they will present you with the good option when really it just doesn't make sense to yeah. pick it. Even in, like, games like Horizon where it's not even a good or a bad option. It's just like, do you want to be nice be smart or be like forceful and i'm like well i'll be nice like i don't want to be mean because <laughs> all the time it's like get over it and i'm like i wouldn't say ayla wouldn't say that <laughs> yeah should, sometimes you don't nice. know as well like yeah. it'll just give like a three-word summary mm. telltale's really bad yeah. and i'll suddenly go <laughs> flip you <laughs> you're like <laughs> whoa huh come on yeah. that was the nice option what are you talking about yeah also actually if you're worried about the npcs thinking you're the baddie you wouldn't do well with um the fable games i don't know if it how much they continued it through the series but i remember mm. in fable one if you did bad stuff it, and like the worse you got you would eventually like start growing horns and there'd be like flies buzzing around your head oh all the time God. whereas if you were good your skin would glow white and like if you were like right at the far end you know most people probably were somewhere in the middle but like yeah, if you went with horns true evil, but also glowing mm. yeah yeah exactly um, yeah, like your skin would go all like pallid and you'd grow a big pair of horns and mm. stuff. It's Mass Effect cool. was a similar thing, except without the horns. Right. Uh, you yeah. sort of just get, your, your skin goes all white. Yeah. You've got like red scars on your face and stuff. Mm. Um, I do like the games that that uh, make you make difficult decisions where mm. you can't be the good guy all the time, like The Walking Dead Season 1, mm. where you are frequently thrust into situations where you have to choose 
the lesser of two evils yeah. or whatever your interpretation is depending on your relationship with the characters and the mm. things you've experienced and the decisions you've made already. I think those are really interesting games and I wish there were more like those where it wasn't just a case of uh, this option for good, this option for bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a terrible thing that's happening and you can't save everyone. What are you going to do? Because mm. yeah. you're going to be the villain in someone's eyes and I think that's uh, that's interesting and I like to see that in games. It's time to move on to a section that I'm glad you're here for, Peter, because we nearly did it without you. Oh, right. We've never done it before. Um, Ashton, what's it called? It's called um, What We Play It. Mm -hmm. It's What We Play In Time. Time to talk about what we've been playing. Peter Austin. What have you been playing? Yeah. What? Yeah. What have you been playing? I've continued to play um, Pac-Man World Repack. Um, I am basically doing what I typically do with new games that I'm streaming is I, I'm playing two runs at the same time in parallel. Um, mm -hmm. So let's see when this goes out. Yes. So I will. I've put there are a couple of levels that I've played at home that I've not played on stream. There's one level I played on stream that I've not played at home because you can go to different warp rooms at different times. Right. I say warp rooms. It's just an island with different areas and doors in it. But yeah, um, but I'm still really enjoying it. Uh, I'm now, I've made it to the, the creepy circus area on both stream and at home. Oh, you were talking about that last week. Yeah, so that was one of the levels that uh, when I, so I, the only reason I'm familiar with this game is that I had a demo for it. And it the demo featured the first level in the game, um, which had all these little signposts telling you how to play the game. It was you know, a tutorial level almost. And then it just had this other one that was a circusy level. And I played both of those levels all the time. I used to boot up this demo disc all the time. Um, and then when I came to actually play the game uh, for the first time, this this uh, remake, I was really surprised that the circus level was like 50% of the way through the game. It's really mm. strange. So I just lifted that from the midpoint of the game and dropped it into the demo. But uh, anyway, I'm there now. It's creepy, um, but I'm enjoying it. I've also, in a similar vein... Uh, been playing, I, I've gone back to do a little bit more of Klonoa um, because there are um, collectible things. I'm not sure exactly what they're supposed to be. You're sort of rescuing creatures or something. I'm not really, I don't, like I said, I don't understand the story to that, <laughs> that game. But uh, in each level, there are hidden uh, creatures that you have to save. Um, and I've just uh, decided to go back and um sort of i'm not going for like a trophy or anything but i just thought oh yeah well, there'll be some probably some little offshoots that i've not explored or puzzles that i never got around to doing so i guess i was just in the mood for mm. like patman's already got me in the mood for for doing a bit of platforming and stuff so i was like why not why not go back and just mop up klonoa a little bit so uh that's just klonoa one though i've not gone back to the second one yet because didn't enjoy that one as much in a way um but uh so yeah, a bit of a a, a double uh, Bandai Namco remake week for mm. me. Uh, they've been busy, those boys and girls. Mm. So yeah, yeah. Ashton. So I moved out of my flat this week, uh, which didn't give me a lot of time to play games. However, I still found the time to um, play a little bit of Lego Island Two: Brixter's Revenge, um, okay. the PlayStation choice. Two game, because I played it on a PC when I was little. Um, it's like one of the only games, if not the first game I think I ever played when I was thinking about it. And my boyfriend was up helping me pack and he had a little like, um, it was called a Retroid Pocket, which is like a little emulator console thing. And um, he's big into just like breaking things and just installing a bunch of stuff on it. Um, so he installed Lego Island 2 and he was like, oh look, didn't this is, isn't this the game that you were talking about? And it was. So I spent the evenings uh, when we didn't have a TV because it was unplugged and the PlayStation was in a box and the PC was in storage um, on this little console playing Lego Island 2. And he was like, Are you, do you want to like watch a movie? And I'm like, no, please, I'm playing Lego Island 2. If you wouldn't mind. <laughs> please, I'm pissed um, the Brickster is loose. The Brickster <laughs> is getting his revenge. Man, this game's so weird. There's so many bits where I'm like, this game is just odd. Like, there was this one bit where Brickster... Was you just like were looking at the sky and he came in and he was so tiny for like ages and then he came finally came into view of being above you and just like flying holding two mama and papa of the pizzeria by mm. their feet just like in the air and then just drops them and says these belong to me now picks them back up by their feet and just flies off again <laughs> into the sky and I was like 
I don't remember this being this weird. Uh, but I think when I was younger, I had like a, I thought this game looked so much better than it did. Now I'm playing it again. The first one was really weird and also looked uh, looks a lot worse than you remember. Yeah. Um, kind of surrealist almost. Yeah. So it is. It is definitely weird. But I got like. 70 80 spent the way through the game and then uh, ben took the console back to oh, leicester with him no. so i have to wait until his, i see him again to um play so you it. packed up all your stuff and he didn't leave the console well i have you. the switch all oh, right okay but um <laughs> i didn't take the retroid with me he he kept that um because that's literally the only game i wanted to play he was like i've got I'll so many Brexit. games now i was like i just want to play lego island 2 i don't know what you're talking about um but i also played a little bit more Tony Honk's uh, pro Tony scooter. Babonis. Tony Baboni's <laughs> pro scooteronis. Mm-hmm. Um, because we were home over the weekend for a friend's birthday. We had a couple of hours before we had to go. So we were playing horse and mm. um, tag, I think, because they're only available on split screen. And I, man, I a- actually went out loud. I hate this game. This game's rubbish. I'm not playing it anymore because I was just so bad at it and I kept falling <laughs> off. And he was playing these games and he's really good at it. And he was like, ha ha, you've got horse. And I was like, yeah, but I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know the, con- I don't understand. Like, I don't know why I keep but falling Ashton, on my ass. You've got a horse. You've, you've got, got horse. horse. To be fair, you do have to a horse fair, edition about that. I was really good at tag, but I was really bad at everything else. Mm-hmm. I was like, can we just play tag again? Because I'm really bad at everything else. But um, yeah, I, I have... I don't want to play that game again. I'm just bad at it, and I don't mm. know how to be better about it. Like, it's no, it doesn't feel like it's it teaching me anymore. It's just like you've had do, the just, basic just tutorial. Skate. Just, just skate just now. Just skate. Do it. I do the 900. You wouldn't want to be a ass. horse, would you? No. Mm, and I do keep being a horse. So, mm. so all yeah. of your stuff is in storage. Yep. I know you've got the switch currently. Yeah. And how long is that stuff in storage? Uh, indefinite amount of time. Okay. Maybe two weeks. Maybe four. Who knows? Who Not knows? me. Okay, cool. I don't. I'm waiting Excellent. to hear back from an estate agent when I can move into the house. And even then, I'm not going to have any furniture. So mm. I'm just going to sit on my bean bag. Yeah. I'm on sleep with on my TV on the floor. Bed, with my TV on the floor. That sounds kind of cool. No actually. internet. And it's going to uh, be like a real, real hang pad. Yeah. Real bachelor pad yeah. I'm going to have. Um, so, yeah. So your your what we play in for the next few weeks may well just be Switch games. May well, yeah. Yeah. Or be nothing because I'll yeah. just be sat staring at the ceiling. But I am Fair staying enough. with Owen of Cultaholic mm-hmm. and his wonderful girlfriend, and they've made me feel very welcome. So maybe he'll let me play on his PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Owen, can I please play on the PlayStation? Mm-hmm. It's homework. It's homework, Owen. Yeah. yeah. So get ready for the next few weeks of just Switch games. There's it's stuff like, on Switch. There is. There's yeah. a lot. There is stuff that I need to go back and play. You've got and loads I never to finish, play. You'll so. be all right. Mario Rabbids, you like that game? Yeah, I need to finish that game. That is first on my list, to mm. be fair. Nice. I played some Warzone, hmm. which hmm. I haven't played for a long time because I uninstalled it because I didn't like it. Anymore. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, my friends and I finally managed to all be online at the same time and available. So we thought, let's play a game together. Why don't we play Warzone as a throwback? Uh, played, I think, two games of it. The first one was was like a resurgence battle royale. So you come back if you know after a certain amount of time, um, if your if your teammates are still alive, and that time gets reduced if they get any kills and stuff like that. Um, and uh, that was, you know, is sure is the same as it was. <laughs> uh, I got a couple of kills, which was nice, and then I got killed by a man in solid gold armor. Right. Oh. And then miraculously, we ended up winning the game because one of my friends hasn't stopped playing it, <laughs> and watch spectating him play the final moments made me so angry <laughs> because if I was playing against this man using the tactics he was using, all the like jumping and sliding and going prone and oh, oh man, it's just it's just a different game now. Mm. Yeah, I can't compete. So that was fine. Uh, then we played a little bit of golf with your friends, which of course is uh, is a real favorite. There's Lovely. a new map. <gasps> is there? It's it's premium. You have to pay for it. All right. But it's really fun. It's bouncy castle one, and it basically feels like a big um, bouncy castle. Bouncy no. Castle? Trampoline. No, not trampoline. <laughs> what was the slide? No, stop. Fall Guys. <laughs> oh, it feels like no. a big Fall Guys level. It's all very colourful, and the music is like deranged clown circus music. Mm-hmm. It's circus flavors. Fun. Circus flavored. Yeah. Circus, circus flavored. Sorry. Yeah. Circus flavors. 
Um, I love my job. I love, I my, love job. my job. I also played a little bit of Dark Souls 2 last night outside of the stream because I was just going around and mopping up a couple of like optional side things. And mm. it's quite cool being massively overpowered and going down <laughs> routes uh, from earlier in the game that you couldn't access before and not having to worry about dying. Mm. Uh, found some cool stuff. Found a great hat. That was nice. Nice. Like, like a proper like like Robin Hood hunter's hat oh, really long that. with a little feather in it and stuff mm. it's great really good uh, the main thing obviously that I've been playing is Saints Row and oh boy it's oh it's so janky it sure is it sure is a game um, I'm not going to talk to the to the the wokeness or lack thereof of it because that's an exhausting conversation uh, but fundamentally as a game it's pretty pretty flipping broken. Has, <laughs> has your opinion changed slightly on it? My opinion sense? has changed in the sense that um, they haven't fixed anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's inexcusable. But it is like the bugs that I've been having ha have been so funny. Yeah. Uh, I shared one on Twitter that I urge you to go and look at. It's the final showdown between you and the boss. And this guy's entire torso dislocates from his hips and just starts like... He T-poses first, He T-poses... No, he A-poses first. He A-poses first. first. Then his entire torso extends like a stretch Armstrong and he just like spasms around yeah. like a Catherine wheel really fast. And then it goes, woo, and like snaps back into place. Uh, it's, oh, it's it's incredible. Um, if I, I went watching that clip, I thought someone should make a game where this happens regularly. Yeah, intentionally. intentionally. Yeah. yeah, that was honestly these moments were helping me get through the game because I've ha I've been like a real a really sort of brain dead, mind empty sort of I just want to play something kind of mood recently, and mm. Saints Row has been perfect for that, which is a criticism in a way, obviously because it is very vanilla, paint by numbers, open world, sandbox kind of thing. Um, but these bugs have been so welcome. I went to kick someone who was on a bike and they just like shot off at a million miles an hour into space. Um, I got set on fire by someone throwing a Molotov and then A posed aggressively at them for a second. And then I went back to being able to play. Uh, just like really stupid stuff. And I have now finished it. I've been leaving my my console on because you generate background income. And the final, final optional thing that you can do after you finish the game is build a Saints Row or a Saints skyscraper. Mm. But it costs like eight million in game dollar -y dues. And I'm glad that I did because I had just over eight million dollar -y dues. And as much as there is to do in the open world, and there's flipping tons of just busy work in there, mm. um, again, which isn't very inspired, I, I was trying to work out if I wanted to maybe go for the platinum or like see this game all the way through, not in terms of the story, because I've done that, um, but in terms of all the side stuff and collectibles and things. And some of the trophies are, they're like, they're, they're just, they're just silly. Just do literally everything kind of trophies. And I, ca I just can't be asked. Mm. Uh, I need to get back to cyberpunk anyway, but I did stick with it long enough to build my big skyscraper. And then, and now I've decided that I've had enough. And I think I will stream it at some point as well because the character creator is great and it's, there's there's a good barber in there and I'd like to stream that. But I am I am done with Saints Row and my final word on it is wait. Just mm. if you're remotely interested, wait for a price drop for it to be included in Game Pass or PS Plus or uh, but mainly for the bugs to be fixed uh, because uh, in its current state, it's a very... In oh, it's offended some people. It's a very inoffensive game that doesn't have a great deal going for it. And when you compare it to GTA, it's definitely not going to stack up. But I still enjoyed it. People are making out like this is the worst thing that's ever happened. And mm. it isn't. But it's still not very good. But I had a decent enough time with it. I enjoyed it enough to see it through to the end. And if you like Saints Row or are remotely interested, I would suggest waiting a while. Uh, before giving it a go. But that's it. Saints Row. I've completed it, mate. Done. Completed it. Nice. Done it. Completed it, mate. That's what I've been playing. <laughs> I think it's time for question two now. It comes from David Lieber. Hey, Pab. I'm going to make Pab stick. 
Given the recent mesh showing from a lot of gaming events, with little info on the big upcoming releases, your Spider-Mans, your Zeldas, how long is too long to hear nothing about a game? I'm starved for Breath of the Wild 2 news, and I'm sure Nintendo could show something if they wanted, but equally I understand the need to control hype and manage publicity. Best wishes, David. Very quickly, at the time of recording on Thursday, I saw that there is a quote unquote Zelda blowout coming soon, <clears throat> potentially in the form of a direct. Yeah, is that right? I don't not, know if that's confirmed or not. Didn't Nintendo not accidentally release that they were having a direct this month? Like, well, that I think they tweeted well being be. like, um, everything that happened at the direct, and it was like went out like a week earlier than it was supposed to. I don't think like they left it off very long, but it was like. Oh the direct is happening at some point soon, I think. Right. So. Okay. Well, I've heard. I think VGC tweeted that there's um, there's going to be a big Zelda blowout soon. There may be Breath of the Wild and Switch ports for some of the older Zelda games. So mm. you may well get your stuff soon, very soon. Anyway, Peter, I think, and we've talked about this before. Uh, games are probably announced too early mm. now, yeah. with nothing. Um, you know, generally, well, not generally, but often, uh, games are announced so early that barely any development has happened at all. It might just be in pre-production. And at that point, you're just almost not setting yourself up for failure because ultimately, when the game finally comes out, you'll probably be able to build that hype back up again and, and get things uh, going. But it's difficult to maintain that hype over a very long period of time when you don't have stuff you can show and in the interim you do end up with frustrated fans um mm -hmm. so personally i think the best way to do things is the way that some games still do some some publishers developers still do which is to secretly be working on a game and then when there's like only a year to go and they know that there's a year to go and they're not going to have to push it more than a couple of months or whatever, uh, that's maybe when you start drip feeding bits of information and little teaser trailers and then bigger and bigger trailers, start doing interviews and releasing 15-minute gameplay segments on IGN or whatever. That's probably the way to do it. Um, and even if it means we're waiting exactly the same amount of time in some ways, it's better not to like give us that initial little, oh, look, this game's coming. How exciting. And then, you know, have a, another five years to wait with nothing. We've said it before, but like in that s instance, you don't know that you're waiting. Yeah, like, exactly. You're just like something might happen, but, you know, you're not. It's not in your mind that this game could happen. It's just that like, yeah, maybe I'd like this game. Yeah, you'd Hopefully probably be thinking happen, but... like, oh, I'd. I'm really hoping they'll do a Breath of the Wild 2, but maybe they won't, whatever, mm. you know, hmm, we'll see. Whereas if they say, no, we are, but then you still have to wait the same amount of time, then yeah. that's, that's worse in a way than, yeah, than just kind of having a question mark. Because in a way, it's more exciting when something isn't confirmed. And if any, like, little accidental bit of information happens where some some shop accidentally lists a product that they shouldn't be listing or whatever yeah. that's a bit more like oh and that's intriguing you don't get mad at like a publisher for keeping things back from you but yeah once they've said no this is happening and then you have to wait and there's just occasional mm. little bits of news then that's that's more frustrating mm. so um i mean i don't know if it i didn't answer the question exactly i said how long is too long to hear nothing about a game but i don't know i think that's I think that's the issue. And yeah, how long is too long? I don't know. I think ultimately it depends on when it was announced in the first place, mm. I would say. I mean, obviously we got the news about Spider-Man and we got a teaser trailer for Wolverine and uh, the KOTOR remake at the Game Awards yeah. last year, which was, what, now 10? No, nine months ago now? Almost yeah, 10 months no, ago November. now? November. Yeah. Uh, no, it was the 9th of December, wasn't it? Or something like that. So... I don't know. She knows. She's right. Some early she December. Is right. Um, so yeah, like nine, ten months ago now. And it's like, we've not heard anything from the vast majority of the games that we saw announced. Apart from KOTOR, which, Apart is, from KOTOR, now which been, is now it's like... It was bad news. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like, I don't know, like some of them I'd forgotten about mm. like, by this point. And I'd be like, oh yeah, I remember when that was announced. But most of them I'm just like... There's so many other things that are happening and other announcements that we had like in the last few weeks or lack of announcements, I should say, that I'm kind of like, well, I'm, I'm the hype has died down for me now because I have forgotten that these were even 
announced. But I do think the issue is less about uh, announcing them to the consumer and generating hype and more about announcing them to potential stock buyers who now may buy stock in your company because they know that you're working on a game that will sell well, Mm, which means that your stock will go up, which means that you, the company, will make more money, which is why a lot of these companies will announce things because they want people like that, their stock to go up and people to invest in their company. So that is kind of annoying because that means that us consumers are like waiting for ages and ages for them to put a game out. But I don't know how long is too long because I think it, like you say, it depends on the game. But also it kind of like when it's such something like this, you kind of just have to wait and like kind of forget about it, remove it from your mind for a while because you know that it's not coming for a while. Like the Spider-Man was what, 2024, we were told, potentially. Mm, Um, Not sure. Which is like, you know, at the time, three years away. Mm. So... There's no rush on that. And we don't need to be like, oh, when is it coming? When is it coming? Because we know it's not going to come for at least another two years. And maybe we'll hear some more about it next year. So, you know, it's a long time to wait is 12 months. But in the grand scheme of things, hey, it's actually not that long. So, yeah, you know, there isn't really an answer, like black and white answer. But it's just, it's hard knowing that a game is coming, but not knowing anything about it or when's it coming. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I completely agree with Peter. I think it's less of an issue about how long you're waiting between things being shown or spoken about and more a case of things being announced way too early. Uh, Delays happen and obviously there's been COVID and a lot of things have have changed and thrown things off trajectory. It's why so many games were delayed out of this year even. Um, But you've just got to stop announcing games more than a year, a year and a half before you think they're ready to go. Mm. Because otherwise it's just too long. You can't announce a game and then go radio silent for two years. Um, It can be rough for fans to know that a game is coming and then for nothing to be shown for over a year. That that's really hard. Like God of War Ragnarok was announced when the PS5 was first shown off in 2020. Mm. And we have seen so little of it even now. I know there's a big Game Informer cover thing and there's some more gameplay out. And we've had a couple of trailers and the, the hype machine is very much rolling now for its release later this year. But they've shown com- uh, comparably nothing. Uh, uh, when, uh, when oh, what am I trying to say? Compared to the first game, they've mm. shown almost nothing yeah. uh, in, in the same sort of time period. It felt like we saw a lot of the original God of War. We It was announced with a sort of gameplay trailer, even if that vertical slice was manufactured for uh, E3 that year. Um, it's just, it just shouldn't be announced so early. That's, that's the main issue. And I, I do feel for Breath of the Wild fans because it, it does feel like it has been years and years since that game was was shown uh, or announced with a trailer, and that there's been there's been nothing going on. It's it's rough for fans, but stop announcing things so early. Mm. You gotta stop. It probably make people like us less frustrated at your your sort of um, opening night lives and your mm. quote unquote E3s because if if you announce say God of War three years ahead or four years ahead, then sub- for every event that happens after that point, there will be people thinking, oh, I might see God of War mm-hmm. at, at last. It might happen. It might happen. And then it doesn't because they're not ready. And then that just increases that frustration. Whereas if you kind of, if you, if, if games were sort of shown off a year or so ahead of their release, then by definition, you would always have like significant stuff to show at every one of these events because every year there's going to be some kind of significant game release. Therefore, like every year going back from that, there's always going to be like something interesting to show. Um, but yeah, the problem is that once the, the idea is seeded that such and such a game is out there, then you're always hoping to see it. And when it doesn't show up, it's massively disappointing. But it's Mm. funny because I feel the reverse of that for like Callisto Protocol. Like every time it's shown at a conference. Yeah, there is is a case of showing too much. I've seen so much of this game. Gotham Knights as well. Yeah, I feel... Because it's, it's like there. we know that it's not going to come for at least another few months now, so that means that there's potentially at least maybe two other shows that mm. it could be in yeah. before we actually see the game. And I'm like, gang, I've seen so much of this game. If anything, if you show me more, I'm going to be less you get inclined to, a point to buy where it. Where it's like, 
you know, a, a trailer releases on on social media or whatever, and you're like, I don't want to. I'm not looking at that. I've already mm. seen. I know I'm I'm gonna get this game or I'm not gonna get this game. You, you sort of make your mind up after yeah. three trailers or whatever mm. it is, and then yeah. yeah, you don't want to see any more. But it feels like Callisto Protocol announced their game ages ago, and then since then, all every time we've seen, hey, I'm Callisto Protocol, <laughs> and then it's like cool, and then is you know a bit more gameplay. We watch the guy die in a gruesome manner again, mm. and then it's mm. like cool. See you in three months for the next conferences. But you want to see another death? You want to see him die again? Yeah. No thanks. <laughs> well, Sorry. it's time to move on to something rather strange. Sorry. Our word. Sorry. It's called. Weird news. Weird news. Weird news. It's weird news time. Time for some weird video game news. Remember, you can submit your weird video game news in the weekly post that goes out on Facebook and Twitter, apart from this week, when it didn't. Uh, we will shout you out if we pick your news. Not this week, though. Yeah, sorry. Also... Weird News is sponsored yeah. by our podcast producers. If you go to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump and support us at a, a, a certain tier, you too can become a podcast producer and get a shout out right here. Peter, do you want to start? We've got Nathan. G.Y. Goliath. Sean Legg. Corey Duffel. Robin Wardle. Ellie Nicholas. Erica Hutchinson. Melody Albonet. Katie Jarrod. And Gabrielle Philippink. Fantastic. Thank you, podcast producers. Thank you, producers. podcast producers. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Peter, what's your weird gaming? News. I have found a weird news on Kotaku. Ooh. It's written by Ethan Gach, who is the sort of second or third in command of weird yes. news mm. at Kotaku. Mm -hmm. Fortnite TikTok creator explains how he used DBZ, that's Dragon Ball Z, to troll the internet. Did you say DBZ, that's Dragon Ball Z? Yeah, joking. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, anime fans' recent rage bait was engineered to troll them, is the subheading. Good. If you were online at all last week and following the Fortnite slash Dragon Ball crossover event, the odds are pretty good you may have come across someone losing it at an apparent Zuma mispronouncing Goku's iconic attack. Now you have to forgive me because I have no knowledge of Dragon Ball Z and I will probably accidentally mispronounce this, but here we go. Um, so this is a quote from him. Uh... So we all know Kamayamama is overpowered, creator Dagwumi said in his August the 18th video. It spread like wildfire. Pretty soon, everyone from Ninja to Goku's real-life voice actor had weighed in. Most then quickly moved on. If they hadn't, they'd have realized they'd been trolled. I had noticed that a bunch of Fortnite creators had been mispronouncing the name Dagwumi. Dag Wummy told Kotaku in a phone interview. And so the night before I made that video, I was just thinking, if everyone else is saying it wrong, it'd be funny to sort of add on that, both because I knew some people would actually kind of take the bait and there would be some funny comments. He was right. <laughs> there is then a, a, his tweet, or no, someone else has taken a video of him mispronouncing it and tweeted saying, I'm crying. Why did he say... Kamehameha. Isn't it Kamehameha? Is, is it? it? Kamehameha. I think okay. so. Um, Kamehameha, isn't it? Kamehameha. Kame so this is it. Why did he say Kam... What did he Kame I Hame think ha. it's Kamehameha. Why did he say Kamehameha You don't know like enough that? about Dragon Ball Z to... I don't know anything about Dragon Ball Z. To, to, to weigh in. But here we go. Play. Is he going to be loud? New Dragon Ball Mythic and Fortnite, ten times stronger. So we all know the Kamehameha is over... Come your mama. Come your mama. Come your mama. Um, the video ended up nailing that social media sweet spot of making people angry about someone being wrong in an extremely specific and nerdy kind of way. Dagwami also confessed to never having ever watched any of the original anime. He said he went with a yo mama pun because it was one he'd used occasionally in the past, and despite recording several different takes with different ways of mispronouncing the phrase, ended up sticking with that version. It apparently, it, it apparently took him 20 to 30 minutes to nail the perfectly dry and straight-faced intonation. If anything, the fact the pun was so corny and made no sense helped make it that much more believable as a genuine mistake. Anyone familiar with this channel would have heard him pronounce Kami Hami Ha correctly just the previous day, but in the context-destroying world of the internet, it became perfect bait. 
especially since there's already a cultural subtext that young people playing Fortnite have no idea where the branded crossover characters they play as originally came from. Dagwami has 630,000 subscribers and filler, filler, filler. Must be nice. Mm. Um, while some Dragon Ball fans raged in TikTok duets, others simply tried to add their own dunks. The come hey ha mama, wrote Ninja. Shaking my head, responded KSI. Even the English dub voice of Goku, Sean Schemmel, reacted, tweeting, The Kamiya Mama is Kami's Mama? Question mark. Wow, what a dunk. Um, Got him. I'm so tired of it. <laughs> um, there's, there's more. But basically, come on your mama is uh, Goku's new attack. Uh, How exciting. Cool. Ashton. <laughs> I have some news. Kami hami ha. I think so. That's worse. But that might be wrong. It should be Kami your mama. Uh, no, the anime, the anime fans are going to come after you. They are, and that's yeah. fine. I'm okay. If with only that. they'll come after me, because I said that that's how I think it's actually. Yeah, pronounced. at least I own the fact that I've got no idea how to say it. Well, you yeah. just said it should be Kami your mama. Yeah. Yeah. You're it should be. Yeah. <laughs> You're part of the problem. Look at that Zuma over there being part of the problem. <laughs> okay, Zuma. Okay, Zuma. Um, I have some news. It my boyfriend sent it to me. Um, and it's from timeextension.com. Oh, I know that one. Written That's by... the new uh, sorry, I can explain what time extension is. It's not important though. <laughs> Do you want to or you don't want to? It's the new <laughs> I was I was like, I know what that is, and uh, no one cares. Shut up. So I'm you not don't want say. to talk I can, about it. I can say, but I don't think anyone's going to care. Only if you want to. No, I don't really want to. No. no? no okay. I'm over it. I've moved past um, it. It's written by Jack Yarwood. Original stars cast reunite to promote new Resident Evil fan film. <gasps> In the subtext, a uh, subheading, itchy, tasty. Oh, mm. itchy, tasty, itchy, tasty. Um, three of the original cast members of the live action opening of Resident Evil have reunited the f- for the first time since shooting the iconic intro. Wow. The Was video- it the dog? No, it wasn't the dog. (laughs) The dog's probably dead now, Peter. Oh, it probably is. The dog is 36. It's probably undead now, (laughs) I think. Yeah. Um, The video of the reunion, hosted on the Residents of Evil YouTube channel, featured Eric Pirius, who played Albert Wesker, Charles Kraslavsky, who played Chris Redfield, and Greg Smith, who played Barry Burton. Talking about their experience filming the original Resident Evil opening in Japan and as part of a promotional campaign for a Resident Evil fan film. The film, called The Keeper's Diary, brings to life one of the most memorable moments of the original Resident Evil about a person undergoing the hor- horrifying transformation into a zombie thanks to their exposure to the T-virus. Sounds like a horrible film. Mm. Mm. It's been directed by Resident Evil superfan and filmmaker Andrew Saul- Saulo and will star the original Chris, Chris Redfield, Charles Kraslavsky, in the role of The Keeper. Um... Mm. According to Saulo, the desire to start working on the fan film emerged from seeing the various attempts from bigger production companies to adapt Resident Evil into a live action. Yeah, yes. that okay. went well. Have you seen they've cancelled the, the, yes, the, the show? Yes, <laughs> yes oh. I have. Yes, I have. It all came, up, all came about after Welcome to Raccoon City. I don't want to rip on anyone's work or anything like that, but the movie kind of lit a fire up underneath my butt, and I was like, okay, I have to do something. So I sent both Charlie and Eric a message online to see if they wanted to play the keeper, and I didn't think I was going to get a response from either of them, but both of them actually replied. So I was like, wow. But we ended up going with Charlie, and Charlie is very passionate about the subject. Uh, Kroslavsky tells us, there was part of me that was hoping that someone would contact me for a project like this. I was just really, really impressed with the storyboard itself. And I think the main that was the main thing. It just looked so beautiful. And I was like, wow, this guy knows what he's doing. And then I did a little background on Andrew and looked in some of the stuff he's done. Um, the trailer for the uh, the trailer for The Keeper, a biohazard story, was released last month, also on the Residents of Evil YouTube channel. And we have to say, it looks surprisingly well done. It features Kraft's Kroslavsky reading from The Keeper's Diary over a quick time lapse of the character deteriorating mental state. Um, according to Kroslavsky, he hadn't ever pl- ever actually played the game, spending much of his youth playing Star Fox 64 instead. So this brought some, lo- some challenges to taking on the role. Luckily, however, Saulo was on hand to supply him with necessary context. Um, but yes, yeah, so they're making a new film and it stars the guy who played the original Chris Redfield. Mm. As the Keeper. As the Keeper. Mm. Yeah. That's cool. Hmm. Weird. Weird. <laughs> I've got a weird news oh, yeah? that I found all by myself. Good well done. You. Hey, thank you. It's from PC Gamer, written by Andy Chalk. And the headline is, Bethesda forced Arcane to call its game Prey 
which studio founder says it was very, very hurtful? I think gross is the word he used. Mm. Um, I In saw one of the story. other yeah, yeah. headlines. Well, should I even read it? Yeah. It's, no, it oh, is already. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay, Ben. <laughs> Okay, I just saw it, I saw it on Twitter the other yeah, day. It's all right. It's, it's fine. Something. The you other day. Seriously, the other day. Yeah, well, not the other day. I was going to say, this was yesterday. published 13 hours ago. Yeah, so no. PC I, Gamer. I think left last night. <laughs> right on say, time. Yeah. With when I say the other day. <laughs> Raphael Colantonio. Yeah, is that so? Mm-hmm. Colantonio said nobody at Arcane wanted to use the title, but Bethesda gave it no choice, which is part of why he left. Oh. I like Arcane's 2017 immersive sim Prey a lot, even more than I liked Human Head's 2006 FPS of the same name, which, for the record, I liked quite a lot too. But I was always baffled by the decision to re- to reuse the title. Developer Arcane was explicit that its game was not a sequel or a remake and had no tie with the original, and it's not as though the 2006 game was such a smash hit that it carried immutable PR value. It was a, ver- a fairly widespread point of confusion. In fact, not, and not hang on. It was a very it was a fairly widespread point of confusion. In fact, and not just among gamers, but also at Arcane. In fact, studio founder Rafael Colantonio, who left Arcane in 2017, said in a recent Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences interview that Bethesda's insistence on using the name was very, very hurtful, and ultimately helped convince him that it was time to go. I did not want to call this game Prey or Pro Two, Colantonio said. I had to say. Uh, I wanted, sorry, I had to say I wanted to anyway in front of journalists, which is not my pleasure. I hate to lie, and those are sales lies. It's not like a personal lie or whatever, but it still felt bad that I had to support a message I did not want. Not only me, but nobody in the team wanted to call this game Prey or Pro 2. Our game had nothing to do with Prey or Pro 2. I'm grateful that a company will give me the means to make a game and trust... Trust my ability with so many millions of dollars. I'm grateful of that. But there is a bit of the artistic creative side that is insulted when you tell this this artist your game is going to be called Prey or Pro 2. You go like, I don't think that it should. I think it's a mistake. It's a sales mistake. Just like a sales lie. Because we're going to get the backfires from the original Prey fans. These ones are not going to be happy. Then the ones who didn't like Prey... They're not even going to look for our game and they're not going to find our game. Mm -hmm. It continues like that, basically. So that was part of, ah, I got to go at this point because I'm not in control of my own boat at this point. Uh, So there we are. That Mm -hmm. is the the news there. The the confusingly titled Prey. Or Prey 2. They didn't even want it to be called Prey. Well, that makes me slightly happier in a way because I've always thought that's really stupid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They called it that. Why would... Why would Bethesda insist? Because they were making a Prey game that got cancelled, weren't they? I don't know if that was, was, if that it was Bethesda? with Bethesda at that point. It may have been. But yeah, Prey, the actual Prey, Prey 2 yeah. was being made. And that was a really cool looking CGI mm, trailer. Like a Blade Runner with aliens. Yeah, there was like, I think you were like a bounty hunter or something. There was a guy chasing this alien criminal over this sort of futuristic city. And then that just never happened. Um, and yeah. then, uh, yeah. Do you reckon they like already had the, the the domain, and they were like, "Oh man, we need to use this." <laughs> We've spent a hundred dollars. We filed on the thing. copyright. We need. We can't, to, not we use can't go back on it now. Just a very strange decision. I yeah. don't know. But like the article says, it, it's not like Prey had that much kind of mm. power behind Cache. it as a brand name. Yeah. yeah. I just thought that was particularly weird. I'm mm. trying to find the thing that I saw. Oh yeah. So there was K- Kotaku tweeted 12 hours ago. Prey director says he felt gross using that name was forced yeah, to by Bethesda. Yeah. Mm, so yeah. it must have just not take, put that bit in the article. Or maybe it was further down. I didn't read the full article. Yeah. Which will be in the link dump if you want to read it yourself. It's time for question three. <laughs> We're on it today. I was just thinking about that spider up there that's been there. Oh, it's yeah, it's not there. moved. It's been it? there like two weeks or a week I, just, I did exactly the same thing I did last week which is to get the very last few drops out I went all the way <laughs> should I zoom in on the yeah. camera and then I could see should I show people could do I mean, if you, you want do, show yeah. the spider. do you want to start reading question three well, I'll, I'll read the question if you're uh, listening on the audio version of the podcast sucks to be you there's a spider in here and you're not going to see it um, we've got a question here from captain underscore cone who who says, hi, Bap, been following you guys since the What Culture days, but the latest podcast was something special for me. 
Last year, I graduated and started in the games industry, and now some of my favourite creators have talked about something I've worked on. The game grew up to be Albert Einstein. No, wait, Dead Island 2. <laughs> so my question to you, as one of, I'm sure, many devs that listen to your show, what triple jump Easter egg would you like to find in a game, and what game? Additionally, what's your favourite gaming Easter egg of all time? Thanks for all the good work over the years, Alex Alex P.S. No, Alex. P.S. I hope you like the game when it comes out. We've given it everything we've got. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, Alex. Thank you, Alex. I'm really sorry that we sort of kind of crapped all over Dead Island 2 a little bit. Um, but hey, we haven't actually played it, so maybe we'll really like it. We've not. Um, we called the spider Dead Island 2. <coughs> yeah. Spider. yeah. Should I poke it with something? Yeah, I, I want to see it. I want to see if it's alive. I don't want to pull down my sleeve. Oh, well. We should or poke, do maybe just blow on it. Probably do gently. a warning to people who don't like spiders. It's yeah, a bit well, it's late. a bit late now. It's been on the screen for ages. Don't use the don't use the that don't use the <laughs> special hat. Don't yeah. poke it. Just blow it. Ashton never used the rules boss hat. There, it moved. <laughs> Is that as sharp as you can get it? Yeah, it's really hard to zoom in because it just focuses on the wrong part of the white screen. I can. I don't think it's a lie. Is the is manual focus not on? It is, but when I go to focus, oh, it does that, and I don't know where it, the spider's <laughs> gone. Before. Oh, I see. Right, I get you. I don't think I don't think Dead Island Two the spider is alive. <laughs> no, I think Dead Island Two the spider is dead. No, nah, it's oh, alive. No. no, it's not because it's not moving when I'm blowing on it. Are you gonna poke it? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do to it? I don't want to like be mean to it, but I think it's alive. <laughs> I touch its back. Yes, yeah, look, it's, it's it's reacting to me. Can you see it? Oh, oh, oh there it goes. How is it? Oh. I don't mind spiders like that at all. That's why I didn't want to disturb <laughs> it. And then I just got up and like yeah. walked the spider. Yeah, I'm going to bug this animal. Yeah. Right. It's fine. It's settled down again. He's He or she is absolutely fine. I guess statistically more likely to be a she this time of year. Mm, mm. I guess. Because they eat the boys. Well, there's maybe a bit early for that. For, for the sex. For spider sex. Um... There we are. Thanks. I think we're back. Well, what a fun, what a fun little tour we just did. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> don't Sorry, worry, Alex. Don't worry, Captain Cohen, Alex. Uh, we do still have answers to your question. We all read the question before the podcast, so it's not like yeah, we know what's going on. Ashton but... weren't paying attention. Though you say that, but I did actually uh, forget half of the question. So, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> as in, like to answer that after pre having pre-read it. Yes. I forgot that it went on to the next page. And so I haven't talked about what my favorite Easter egg of all time is. So I'm having a think about that now. Okay. Well, uh, I struggle to think of my favorite Easter egg of all time. It's one of those things where it's like, I'm sure there'll be one that I really love that for some reason isn't coming to my mind. Mm. But I'll, I will get to some in a minute. Um, in terms of a triple jump Easter egg, I think it's a bit, it would be a bit, um, uh, I don't know, pretentious for to, to be like, I think w the three of us should be in a game. Although we have been in a game. We have been in a game, yeah. Um, we have, yeah. But I, so for me, I think I would be more comfortable with a triple jump Easter egg being like a pink walrus in a game somewhere. Yeah. Mm. Maybe it could be like an unlockable animal with a cheat code in like Project Zoo or something. Mm. Uh, it, I, I assume you can probably get walruses already. And then if you press like, if you open the console and type in lot better parent or something and then hit enter all of the walruses turn pink and it changes mm. the word walrus to billy ray walrus or something like that <laughs> that would be amazing that would be, that good. Would be good um so yeah pink walrus or maybe just a tiny little hidden pink walrus like an actual billy ray walrus in like in a dilapidated bedroom in the last of us or something like that um that could be that could be fun um in terms of favorite easter eggs like i say there'll be definitely easter eggs that i love more than this but ones that just came to mind i got one immediately which i believe is statistically like it doesn't happen super often but for me almost the first thing that the merchant said to me in resident evil village was what are you buying <laughs> i sorry i had a friend who used to say that all the time mm -hmm. um i thought that was fun um but yeah apparently it's a bit a bit rare for him to say that um and also another fairly recent one uh in the Spyro Reignited trilogy, uh, there are a couple of different character animations that involve, that have Wumpa fruit in them, which is quite nice. So uh, in Spyro 1, there's these uh, wizard 
guys who are feeding these big animals and they're throwing wumpa fruit into their mouths. Uh, and then in Spyro 2, there are these lemurs that in the original game used to just throw sort of coconuts at you, but they now throw wumpa fruit. That's mm. fun. Um, and then in a sort of reciprocal manner, in Crash 4, there were a couple of Spyro Easter eggs as well. Uh, in fact, there were three. There was one right at the start. When you're on the beach, there's a little Spyro rubber ring floating around in the water. Bless you. Thanks. Bless you. Thanks. Then there's a very obvious one that's not even an Easter egg where you're at this big carnival and a giant Spyro balloon goes past. <laughs> um, and then in the concept art book for Crash 4, on... There's a big sort of futuristic city level um, and there's loads of like ads and like neon signs and stuff all over, over the city. And it didn't make it to the game. But in the concept art, there's this big picture that someone had drawn. And like way down in the bottom, you can see that there's an ad for Spyro 4. Um, and unfortunately, we don't have Spyro 4 yet. But it was like, <sighs> you know, it's like like a little tease saying it'll Please. happen, but it's not happened yet. We want it. So. Those those ones obviously kind of appeal very much to, um, you know, the things that I'm a fan of. But there'll be more out there, I'm sure. Psycho Mantis is a good one. If that counts, you know, the, like the the whole mechanic of like what's on your memory card, and th- mm. I don't know if that's an Easter egg. Probably not really. Mm. But um, um, yeah, it's part of the part of the game. Still very cool though. Yeah, Ashton. Um, I really it doesn't really count as an Easter egg because it's kind of part of the whole game. But I really like in Astro's. Ash, what's the new one? Astro's Playroom? Is mm-hmm. that the new one? I really like how there was all those little homages to like all the PlayStation games as you were playing the game. There was like a yeah. little Aloy climbing up a mountain and then there was like a little Kratos and um, Atreus Astrobot on a boat. They're sort of Easter eggs in a way. Yeah. There's like a billion of them. So yeah. they feel less like Easter eggs, but, but they still sort of count. When I first like was playing the game and I was encountering the first few, I was like, oh, hi, this is so good. And mm. then there was just so many. I was like, oh, I know what that is. Hey, I know I figured this one out. <laughs> um so I really like that. And I also just really like when games will just like call back to their old games. Like in control, the like whole Alan Wake DLC is obviously it's not an Easter egg, but it's just like a callback. Mm. Um which isn't so obviously Alan Wake when you're playing it, but then you're like, hey, I think I recognize this. Mm. And I just like the that kind of thing. Um, but in terms of Easter, Easter eggs that we could be in, um, I didn't think about being, uh, what's it, um, humble. I thought we could mm. be in the game. Um, either three similarly dressed skeletons around a hob, or Hob. we're main menu <laughs> dressed zombies. There's like three of us mm. with our like apron and the hats on. The red jumper. Yeah, red jumper, like coming out of a house with like you are the meal. a knife and you're the meal. Mm. Yeah. And it says Mr. Happy's place. Yeah, Mr. Happy's oh, house. house. On the I like that. That's good. I know that could be quite fun. So, because no one else would know, no. but if you were a fan of the channel, you'd be like, "Hey, look at those!" That's cool. It'd just be like, "There's some three chefs over there," but it's not; mm. it's us. It's slightly less self-important if, like, you're not instantly recognizable as you. Yeah. Like, if if it was like the three of us doing a snippet of podcast, if you like tune the radio or something, that's a bit like okay. Jeff Keighley and Death Stranding. Yeah. yeah, that's Jeff Keighley. Yeah, but like skeletons or zombies is, is you know, it's more like, mm. oh yeah, I, you have to know what it is to get it. Mm. Uh, firstly, congratulations on your work on Dead Island yeah, 2. Yes. Sorry we weren't overflowing with enthusiasm, but I hope it's good and I hope you've enjoyed working on it. Mm. Uh, in terms of an Easter egg that I have enjoyed, I also managed to miss this in the question. Uh, there are well, Borderlands 2 has some great Easter eggs. There's an entire cave that looks just like a Minecraft cave. Yeah. It's got oh, creepers in it yeah, and stuff. And you yeah, unlock yeah. a head skin that's just a block head mm-hmm. uh, like Steve. Um, there are... There's also, if you run out into this poison lake, there's a little island with a sort of a big twisting tree and some ruins yeah. and a couple of knights on it. Uh, I think one of them's like called Rolair or something mm. like that. And it's there's a little fireplace with a sword sticking right. out of it. And it's a little Dark Souls Easter egg. There's, there's one of those in The Witcher 3 as well under a, if I remember rightly, under a sort of like a, a, a rope bridge down. There's a little hollowed out area and then there's a sword sticking out of a, a bonfire nice That's little Dark Souls me. reference you've reminded me of one of, of my favourite well. yeah jokes. there's one in uh, Horizon Forbidden West mm-hmm. there's a few actually that are God of War themed mm-hmm. there's one that you can find like an axe like Kratos' axe in a tree mm-hmm. and there's little um, statuettes that are like the um, the two dwarves 
and then one of Atreus and one of Kratos that you can like find in the map, which nice. is quite fun. Mm. Talking of under bridges, there's that one in Oblivion where uh, oh god, <laughs> there's like a troll. If you walk along, it like spawns it in. There's a troll face down in the water under a bridge, and if you search his person, he's got a note on his uh, in his inventory and written in like really broken English. It just says. Me worst troll ever. Me get drunk and kill self. <laughs> He's just, just That's jumped just off the, the saddest bridge. troll. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Who decided? Oh, do you know what this game needs? A, a suicidal a sad troll. Sad troll. Yeah. 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 Uh, in terms of ways we could be featured in an Easter egg, yeah, the pink walrus is an obvious one. I think mm. that that would work really well. Just even as a little t stuffed toy in a mm. cupboard or something. Or because we've done a lot of stuff with cats, just three cats that happen to have our names. Yeah. yeah, just in a game mm. and yeah. somewhere that would that would be you know just something simple like that. Just like with food bowls, yeah, that they're yeah. eating out of. Yeah, exactly, yeah. something like that. Right, it's time to move on to something rather large. It's the big, big discussion. discussion. It's big discussion time, time for the big video game discussion, which this week comes courtesy of Michael Milan, who says, With so much Last of Us Part 1 discussion lately, what do you feel are the qualifications for a remake? Both qualifications to become one, things like being well-loved, how old it is, and the qualifications to being a good remake, uh, things like honouring the original but providing a new experience. Would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Um, well loved goes without saying that's a good one um, in terms of age I was thinking I was struggling with this I was like what is what's a good rule for age and I think I've come up with one that I would be satisfied with don't know about everyone else I think it should be um, preferably two generations old mm. in order to be remade mm. um, I've written that as well yeah two console generations ago yeah I don't think that they should be remaking games for PS5 that were on PS4 for example um, and in that, I ideally, I don't think there should be any particularly recent remasters either, um, or remasters that still hold up very well today. So what I'm hearing is uh, you don't want The Last of Us Part 1. I mean, <laughs> it looks good, yeah. and it's an excuse to play the game again, um, because I would never sit down and put The Last of Us remastered into my console and play it. Mm. But... Yeah, by my rules, I don't think they should actually be being made. Um, I think it's a bit silly, to be honest. I think they just they know that people will play it, and buy it, and they'll make money on it, and so it's a business decision. And fair enough, they're a business. But in terms of just what what is a good reason to remake a game, I think no, that's not that's not a good candidate. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys want to do your your um, qualifications first, and then? Yeah, we can talk about yeah. what makes a good remake. Um, obviously, like the being well loved thing is important, but I also do think that if a sequel comes out which has improved a lot of the game mm. mechanics, visually, like, and it's introducing a whole new generation, and people can't necessarily go back and easily play the first iteration of the game, I think that that should be remade. The, like you know, Resident if, Evil. Like Resident Evil, yeah, exactly. Like I think that you know a lot of the the people who've uh, been really into Resident Evil now haven't necessarily had the opportunity to play one through four, for example. So it's really good that they're being remade so that a whole new generation of gamers can experience them in a way that they are comfortable with playing games and that isn't frustrating for gamers who have learned these mechanics, like these controls growing up that now have to relearn, you know, the older controls that we've got. Um, so a sequel does tend to help kind of encourage that a remake be made, which is obviously why they've kind of done The Last of Us Part 1, yeah. because they d redid a lot of the gameplay in Part 2. Again, I don't know if enough, but that's a whole different thing. Um, so I think that like if it, a sequel comes out and the first game is no longer accessible to the generation of gamers that want to play the sequel, then I think it should be remade so that people can play the first game to catch up on the second game. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Good. Cool. That's fine. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh. So the, <laughs> the energy's weird in here. It today. is weird. <laughs> there was that whole spider thing. It's really throwing me. Yeah, off. Yeah, it's throwing me off as well. 
I, he like Dead Island Two: The Spider is contorted in a really strange way. Yeah, now. it's because Peter harassed him, and now he's sad. He's not contorted. He's always perfectly splayed out. Is he? Yeah, maybe okay. it's just the angle you're at. Yeah, maybe. The angle now. I'm just worried about him. You know. He's, he's all right. The only thing I'm worried about is he might not get like, many flies in here. Well, he if it, well, there isn't many flies in here, but maybe that's because of him, because there's a lot of flies in the office. Yeah, there's maybe. a vent over there. Mm. I assume that's Hopefully. how Dead Island to the Spidey got in. Anyway, uh, in terms of what qualifies for a remake, I think you are both absolutely right. It should be uh, at least two console generations ago, maybe 10 to 15 years. The game has to have at least been good, I think. I know we've spoken mm, before about point. how it would be nice for remakes to focus on games that had a lot of promise, um, but that just completely bungled the execution. Mm. And, you know, they basically get another chance at it. But I think at that point, you might as well just reboot. You know, yeah. you might as well just, just take that IP and reboot it rather than remake it because it probably doesn't have a huge amount of name or brand recognition. So just, just do it Or similarity to the original if you've changed Yeah, if you're changing it. it that much, then yeah, absolutely. And it may well be that the writing was horrible, but the setting was cool, for mm. example. Troll and, and I. Tro Trollandi, yeah, Trilandi. exactly. Yeah. Uh, Embracer smells Group. Like me. Sm smells like butter me. Smells like butter me. Embracer Group specifically will remake any old tripe. Mm. They don't care. They'll just remake anything. Yeah. Um, as has been seen most recently mm. with uh, Destroy All Humans, which I know has a sizable fan base, but those games were never reviewed particularly well or held in particularly high regard. So I, I've always that's always baffled me. And the SpongeBob remake as well was a weird choice. Uh, don't know why they did that. But I think there should be, in terms of my personal preference, in terms of interest especially, they should have a certain amount of appeal in terms of its critical reception and its belovedness by the people who played it at the time. Mm. Um, you know, like the Klonoa remake, mm. I think is a prime candidate because not only are those games hard to come by, but also they probably aged quite a lot and people love those games. Yeah. They, they speak really highly of them. So that's, that's a perfect I've candidate. I've been wanting to play them on stream just the original like emulate the ps1 versions for ages i was thinking like oh, i must play that at some point and then they announced the remake i was like oh great perfect yeah absolutely yeah. uh the one th thing that bucks that rule though for me in terms of the amount of time that's passed is that the right so resident evil one's gamecube remake mm. didn't come out that long after the original Resident Evil came out on PS1. It was, what, a matter of five years, five, six years thereabouts, mm. potentially? I don't know the specific dates, but certainly they're, they're only one console generation separated. Um, but at yeah, that time, so. could you call it... Were, re, were remakes really a thing at that point? They probably were. And is it technically a remake or is it just a, a, a re really nice port? Yeah, mm. just like a from-the-ground-up port because mm. it's not even on the same console family. I don't really know how... That works, but I would quite like to see uh, Resident Evil One remade now. We're in the in the engine, the creation. Is it the creation engine? No, what's it called? The uh, RE engine. RE engine. RE engine. Yeah. Creation engine. Bethesda. Yeah, the RE engine. I'd love to see uh, Resi One as good as that uh, GameCube remake is. Um, I would love to see that tackled again. Yeah, they're only six years apart. Um, on Wii, it came out on the the same day, twenty second of March. So it was like an anniversary thing on and, the Wii. Uh, uh, Oh, yeah, sorry. Are you doing Resi 4? No, no, you're right, like GameCube. Because yeah. Resi 4 wasn't that far for the... But the Wii wasn't... A, that wasn't a remake. That was no, I a always... Point. For some reason, I always think it's on the Wii, but it is on, that is accurate to the GameCube, okay. that information. Six yeah, years. So yeah, 22nd so of March, six years later. That's probably one of the few times, I think, that nobody could disagree that that was a good thing to do. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, what's the second part of the question, Peter? Uh, the second part was, uh, what actually makes a good remake? So it's... It might have ticked all those boxes. It's worthy of a remake, but what should they do then? Um, mm. So I think, I mean, some of the stuff we kind of covered as a, as a reason to remake a game in the first place. So I think like updated controls are a good thing or maybe a completely kind of updated presentation a la Resident Evil. Um, but I think in terms of controls, actually, it's, it's, I mean, it kind of depends on the genre to a certain extent, but it's always worth leaving in the option to go back to the old control scheme. Mm -hmm. Not all games do that, not all remakes do that, but I am a big fan of that because it might be a game that you played that much when you were younger that you still have the muscle memory now and you pick it up and you're like, can't play this anymore. Um, mm -hmm. I think the, the Master Chief Collection updated some Halo 1 controls that I tried to switch back. Um, 
I'm trying to think. There's definitely been a couple of recent remakes. Um, well, was, was Crash was slightly remaster, different? But... Some of the timing was off on the jumping or something? I seem yeah, to it, I, I think, yeah, there was an issue with... That was more of a hitbox issue, and I don't think it's necessarily something they could have, like, switched around. Did um, they give you the option in the Spyro Reignited trilogy? Because wasn't there a little bit of a difference, or did I make that one up? Yeah, there was a slight difference with, um, like, camera controls, I think. Mm. Um I'm not really sure. I can't think of like that many examples, but there are games that do and do not give you the option to switch back to original controls where they've they've changed them. Um, I think it's nice when old cut content is reinserted, stuff that didn't make it because maybe there were there were technological issues or it was just decided this isn't appropriate. The thing that comes to mind again to go back to Crash Bandicoot um, was the Stormy Ascent level that was they they waited like a couple of months and then released that as free DLC. And that mm-hmm. was fun. Just a really difficult level for people to, you know, go back and play a bit more uh, Crash. You know, and it, it helps from a business sense as well. Once people have sort of played through your game and maybe put it down to be like, hey, remember our game? Go and play it again. Look, now there's a free level. Mm. Um, that's a lot of fun. And it's always interesting to see stuff that was left on the cutting room floor, I think, with any game. Um, again, I like the option of having the original soundtrack being switched back uh, if they're doing like a, a remade soundtrack i think it's nice if they've got the rights to do so to leave the original on there um but then yeah something that i really do like in particularly with resident evil as an example is some deviation from the original story or even from the original level design um i think with the likes of a 3d platformer it doesn't really make sense to do that but with something that's got a bit more substance to it like a resident evil or you know even with the last of us i would have been more interested if i to to hear that uh, the last of us remake was gonna you know throw in some extra bits and bobs and maybe they will but what they've shown us so far is literally a side by side Mm -hmm. here is like a shot for shot uh thing so gameplay wise i suspect they've basically just remade every level as it was but it would be really cool if they throw in some surprises and um yeah it works very well in horror games in particular like yeah you're expecting certain jumps they even did that in the um the resi one uh remake with the mm. the dogs through the window yep um move so, the placement of enemies and items yeah, yeah that's a really good idea um and then yeah just just quality of live touches being able to pause or skip cut scenes which you, you know depending on how old the original game was that you're remaking probably wasn't an option um maybe less sort of archaic artificial difficulty um you know some games were just designed to be a grind because that's how games were done back then and you know you can remove things like that um very easily nowadays so yeah those are some things that i think are good ashton uh peter basically covered everything i was going to say oh, but sorry. uh it's okay <laughs> should have we maybe should have gone like <laughs> it's fine round and round um i was just gonna say i don't think it needs to be a completely new experience like a lot of what you were saying it, it, there should be a lot of like what made the first game so good and for those of people who have the nostalgia of the original game should definitely still be able to be like hey i remember this i know how to do this bit like the back of my hand um but it is always nice like you say to add new bits in or change things around a little bit just to make sure that like there is something new and fresh and it's like you say especially with horror games because you yeah. know those jump scares only work once um mm. so if they're suddenly in a different place then they're extra spooky sometimes and it raises the tension when you get to it and, and it, it doesn't, doesn't happen. happen yeah so not only do you get do the, does the de- developer get the benefit of still giving you the jump scare because mm. you don't know when it's happening mm. but they also raise the tension or get you to let your guard down because you know it's going to happen and it doesn't and then you walk and you're like oh yeah, I, think, I guess they must have removed that and then two seconds yeah. later they make you jump. So, um, yeah, it doesn't have to be a completely new experience, but I do think they have to, like, mix it up a little bit. Um, I think, like I was saying with the sequel, if there is gameplay that has been polished and, like, really well done in mm-hmm. a game that's more recent, then it is really nice to kind of bring those mechanics into the new game so the people who have played the sequel recently don't have to be like, oh, yeah, I can't I can't do that in this game. I have to go back and remember that this is a different game. Um, but, yeah, I, I think everything Peter said is pretty much uh, what I had to say. But, yeah, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, I, I have a couple. Of, I don't think Peter said enough, quite frankly. Whoa. Whoa. No, the Resi 2 is like the gold standard, isn't it, mm. for yeah. remakes in yeah. terms of changing things up, and that is... 
really what all remakes should strive for. But you're right in that horror games have an advantage over regular games because they can really subvert expectations in a spooky way. And people um, want that more. in a way. Mm. Yeah, they do. They want to be scared in the same but different kind of way. Um, you're absolutely bang on about control schemes as well, giving people the option to go back. But I would like to emphasize how important it is to modernize control schemes in these games, particularly in the upcoming Resi 4 remake, mm. because I could not get on with those controls. Like I, I probably could and should have stuck with it and I would have gotten mm. used to it. But with that knowledge that the remake was coming... I just thought I'll wait. I'll wait until I I get the 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 remade experience with modernized things because games have come so far, especially if we're sticking to our rules of two console generations. Mm -hmm. uh, games have come a long way from where they were, especially those being remade. So things do need to be modernized and brought up to the, the current day standards. Uh, so while it's nice to include an option to revert to original controls if people want, it still has to be accessible for modern players because mm -hmm. otherwise, why wouldn't they just go back and play the original yeah another thing that you said ashton you know it's important maybe the games uh, being remade are occasionally games that you can't really get access to anymore yeah. um so that's again why these things should be updated really uh something that would be really nice for a remake is as well as cut content and additional stuff maybe some sort of museum mode i know a lot of uh like the the disney game collections have uh, all sorts of screenshots and artwork and that kind of stuff included in there that you can go in and look at and mm. uh, behind the scenes stuff and, uh, you know, talking heads and documentaries. All, all that kind of stuff I think is super interesting. And if you're going to remake a game, you're celebrating it. That's the whole point. And you should really try and make that the definitive version of that game so that hopefully we've reached the point now in the games industry where we are no longer going to lose access to games that are coming out now like ps4 games are you know they're backwards compatible on ps5 and same on xbox and so on like we've reached a point now hopefully where every single system going forwards for as long as we have systems will be able to play these games and onwards mm. uh, and hopefully they'll work at backwards compatibility but that does mean that these remakes should be, should aim to be the best, most definitive final version of these games that ever need to be made because people will always be able to come back and play yeah. this remake. Yeah. So they need to have everything in them that people could possibly want. And uh, I just think it would be so nice if The Last of Us Part 1 had loads of extra stuff in it. I don't know if it does, but... As you pointed out and as you asked about Ashton, I think by all of our metrics, The Last of Us Part 1 doesn't really need to exist um, and is a bit of a big ask. But, but we're I, probably all going to play it. Probably still <laughs> all going to play it, yeah, because I'm, you know, I, I like that game and mm. I, I would like to play it again. It's just The Last of Us as a brand is so toxic at the mm. moment. Yeah, um, no, you yeah. can't really go near it, so it's tough. I wish I hadn't have just played the remake, the the remaster, mm. because I literally finished that like the last few months. Right. Yeah. So now I'm like, oh, I don't want to play again because I've literally just finished the game. I've not played it in maybe since. Have I? I might have only played it once actually. Mm. Um, I might have played it twice, but yeah, it's been years and years since I played Last of Us One. I'm I think glad I that it's it in been. Lockdown. Mm. I'm glad that it's doing well. Like the early reviews are, yeah. are really positive, but like they weren't going to be negative. They had to do a lot to this game to come back and be like, it's only a fifty. It's like bad, there was not, there was not gonna. They, we've seen what they can do. Well, they managed it with they've GTA. Got the well, yeah, mm. but they've got the engine built from The Last of Us Part Two. You know, we've they've not had to like as necessarily like GTA remake because that was just a whole mess. Like mm. they haven't had to kind of like get an AI in to do it. They've already got the team that've been working on it who know the face shapes of the characters who've been like working on the other game. So they kind of would have had to really, really balls it up for it to go anywhere below like a, at least a 90 because it's just, yeah. the game was already really good and did really well. How are you going to mess it up so bad? Mm. So GTA was just, sorry to be anal, but GTA was more of, of a remaster. It was a remaster. And I, would, sure. I would love to see that if they just thought, you know what, for a laugh, let's remaster the remaster of The Last of Us 1 using AI techniques mm. and just see what see weird what stuff gets spit out. But in a way, it's it's almost 
more unforgivable that GTA was a remaster. So the fact that yeah. The Last of Us can be remade from the ground up and, you know, that takes a lot more work and a lot more resources and seemingly come out a, a 90% plus game compared to just remastering Grand Theft Auto, basically just doing new models and textures. That's, that's sort of it. Mm. I mean, I'm no developer. I'm sure there's more to it than that, but... There's no excuse for that game. No. It's just hysterical. It's so funny. I have it as well. I need to play it at some mm. point. Or do I? Do I need to play it? I do own Dunno. San Andreas, the the original PS4 remaster right. that they released beforehand, mm. which is arguably the, the better version. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, well, there we are. That's our big discussion. That's the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Let us know what you think in the comments below and at various places around the internet. Peter's going to tell you some of them right now. YouTube.com and Twitch.tv forward slash Team Triple Jump. You can go to both of those places to see our video and live stream content. When we're live streaming on both YouTube and Twitch, we are modded by Love Rotovich, Trowling Badger, and Mr. Black. Thank you, mods. If you've got Amazon Prime, part of the whole bundle there includes a Twitch sub, so you can spend that on us if you like. Uh, we've got um, a Twitter and Facebook. That's Twitter.com and Facebook.com forward slash Team Triple Jump. You can see our video and live stream announcements, legacy video content, little bits of posts and things where we're saying, hey, weird news, question mark. Hey, questions for this thing, mm. question mark. Mm -hmm. um, TikTok.com forward slash at Team Triple Jump. It's where our ticks and talks are posted. Uh, and Patreon.com forward slash Team Triple Jump is our Patreon. There are lots of rewards on there. You, get, you, you can have a listen to the uh, second podcast, which we're about to record. Uh, after this it's very exciting uh and early worst games ever weirdest games ever um all those sorts of things so absolutely have yeah. we have a website it's triple dot map that's triple ju dot mp it spells jump it's very clever if you want to join our discord you can go to triple jet dot map forward slash discord and hang out with a wonderful community on discord we're modded by jack joe tory and hollow eyes and if it tells you to do something bloody well do it um, if you want to listen to the podcast in its audio forms, maybe you're off to Wales for that uh, wrestling thing <sighs> that's happening. Clash of the Castle. Yeah. 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 Wow, well done. Um, why not go to triplejet.map forward slash podcast? We can keep you company on your journey. Um, if you want to watch one of our live stream VODs, if you've missed one of our live streams during the week, you can go to triplejet.map forward slash VODs. If you want to book us for a cameo, maybe you've got a birthday coming up, why not go to triplejet.map forward slash cameo and we'll record you a little video message. Mm. Um, if you want to buy some sick and cool merch, like this, like this, like this, not this one. Not this one. You can go to triplejumpshop.com and make sure you're following at triplejumpshop on Twitter for the latest merch announcements. That was good. That sounded like a train tannoy. For Thank the you. Merch, merch announcements. announcements. Uh, follow Peter and Ashton on Instagram and Twitter at that Peter Austin and at Scrambled Ashton and myself just on Twitter at Confused underscore Dude. We do lists every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Streams every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Thursday being the joint stream. Blaze it. On YouTube, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday being solo streams on Twitch. What's Gibbs Ever is fortnightly Friday for patrons of a certain tier, Sunday for everybody else. The podcast is every Saturday. We do shows all the bloody time. Why not leave a five-star review on your platform of choice? It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms. There are two big things out this week because I scheduled one while you were off yesterday. Right. That being Rules Boss. He's back. Oh, yes. It's oh. good. Yeah. Oh, Did is you it know ready? I didn't know. Nobody tells me Anything. It's on a need to know basis. I find so. things out on this podcast and on this podcast only. Need Every week is a new thing that happens. Basis. It's a great one, though. It's a really good rules boss. Yeah. Karen did a great job with the edit. Yeah. Ashton was a real trooper with the challenge. Yeah. You want to know what it is? Well, it's already out, actually. So mm. it's no spoiler. What is it, Ashton? I played Switch Sports Tennis, but I attached the. Uh, the Joy Con to my head, and I tried to play tennis with my head, which is seemingly easy, but actually quite difficult. Yeah, Bit of a challenge. So very funny though. Yeah, um, yeah. Hopefully. How's your head? Is that okay? You recorded it last week. Yeah, it's. I still have a headache, but I don't know if that's just from other things. <laughs> uh, but I think I've rattled a few brain cells out. Mm. So good. That'd be fine. So you'll be better at it next time. Yeah. Is what I'm hearing. And there's also worst games ever out, Peter. It's a really good one. We recorded it. Was it yesterday? No, I wasn't in yesterday. Two days ago. Yeah. Tuesday, yeah. Uh, we recorded just recently, and James Jenkins, I'm hoping, will have turned it around in time. Uh, he will have done. He's a dedicated boy. He is. Uh, it turned out really well. Mm. Um, 
we actually had, I'm going to, actually, no, I won't say that. Uh, but it's really good. <laughs> yeah. So go and watch it. Um, it's already out now for patrons. As is Weirdest Games Ever, which are coming out next week for everyone else, but it's oh, out on Patreon so now. Mm. So. Uh, and Worst Games Ever is out for everybody else tomorrow. I won't say what it is. Okay. Ooh, okay. It's a good one. You should go and watch it. Maybe I will say what it is because people might be more likely to click it, actually. Okay. It's Gadget and the Gadgetinis. Not Inspector Gadget. No. Just Gadget for reasons. It is Inspector Gadget, the character, but it's not called Inspector he's lost Gadget. His, he's lost his PC license. For reasons you will discover in the episode. Yeah. He had to hand in his badge and gun, and he's no he longer. He did. His and his hat and his, and his hat comical and his boxing comical. glove. In yeah. His whole body, basically. Yeah. Yeah. He's just a head now. <laughs> uh, wonderful. Well, go watch all that amazing content coming out this weekend. Uh, thank you so much for listening once again and Peter there's just enough time to run through this week's sponsor again I will, I will go in are you sick of decorating rooms quickly in GTA yeah well you can play a worse game it's called Paint Slow play it it's good it's really uh, good thanks for watching everybody we'll see you next time bye, bye. so woke.